the scientific community has spoken. Climate change is happening now and is caused by human activity. Fossil fuels, black oil, coal and gas have created modern society as we know it. But when burnt into the atmosphere, carbon causes climate change. But it doesn't have to be this way. We have the solutions and we must move quickly to implement them. Human ingenuity working alongside Earth's natural systems is building a new world that is sustainable and self-reliant. By harnessing the elements, the sun, wind, and waters, we can move away from our dependence on fossil fuels, decentralize, and create a sustainable economy that will support our modern civilization long into the future. To bend the carbon curve and reverse climate change, we need to stop burning fossil fuels. But how do we power this new world? What does the world look like off fossil fuels? The first thing people need to understand is that we don't need fossil fuels anymore. It's been this terrible myth that has kept us chained to those dirty fuels, that they're a necessary evil, and we just don't need them. We need to start transitioning rapidly, at least by 2020, to a state of clean and renewable energy for all purposes. That's electricity, transportation, heating and cooling, and industrial processes. And we think clean is wind, water, and solar power. So for electricity, it's wind turbines, solar photovoltaics, which go on rooftops or in power plants, even tidal and wave offshore, uh, even geothermal power, some hydroelectricity. For heating and cooling, we need heat pumps that run on electricity and run in versus for air conditioning. Also for industry, high temperature processes, we'd use electricity or some hydrogen. Solar is proven technology. People have been investing in it for decades. Google, Apple, Warren Buffett's invested almost $7 billion in solar projects. So if you do it right, you can create a really solid investment that generates cash flows every month and Mosaic is working to make it possible for all of us to participate in investing in this exciting and important new asset class that are banking on the sun. And the reason this would save money in the long run, in terms of electricity, wind, water, solar have zero fuel costs. So once you put up these devices or a wind turbine or solar PV, the fuel cost is zero, and so you stabilize the price over time, whereas fossil fuel prices are going up over time. So if we look at the 10 states in the United States with the highest fraction of electricity from wind in the last 10 years, the price of electricity in those states went up only three cents a kilowatt hour. All the other states went up four cents a kilowatt hour. So this is evidence that you stabilize prices when you put up renewable energy. We have the capacity, we have the robustness to step up to big, big crises, to big, big challenges, and deliver not just nation-shifting solutions, but planetary-shifting solutions. Uh, Germany and Denmark, for example, have done a tremendous amount in order to transition both to renewable energy resources, but also to transition the control of those resources from the hands of utilities and the traditional controllers into the people, like cooperatives, farmers, individuals, now providing their own energy. We are at the, exactly the same moment that Germany was at. We have over 500 coal plants in this country that those are fundamentally non-economic. They can't compete with alternatives like solar and wind. So what is going to happen in the next few years, they're going to have to pick an alternative source of power. We could have exactly that kind of revolution, really exciting, democratizing power activities that are happening at the state and local level. You know, for 100 years, we've had power systems that have been centralized. The power plant is out in a remote location, and the power travels from there to our homes and businesses. And the idea is basically to spread it out, to generate power closer to where we use it from all the sorts of different sources. Clean energy is one of the largest wealth creation opportunities of our time. If we can make it possible for people to participate in and benefit from that transition, it's one of the biggest opportunities for broad-based prosperities. When communities are making decisions for themselves, they're going to pick renewable energy resources because it's not only a source of energy, it's a source of power and control over their energy future, and it's a source of economic development. Communities are doing what are called microgrids, people creating sort of miniaturized versions of the electricity system. They're doing it on college campuses like University of California, San Diego, and they're doing it in places along the Northeast. In our plans to power the world, uh, we're converting everything. Not only are you going to be powering normal electricity like we do today, but vehicles will be powered by electricity. Even if it's hydrogen, it will be hydrogen produced from electricity. 
So transportation accounts for about one third of total carbon emissions in the United States. If we want to get serious about mitigating the effects of climate change from the transportation sector, we really need to talk about cutting our oil use, making our gasoline powered vehicles and trains, planes and ships more efficient. The second is promoting um, and developing electric vehicles. And then the third is also promoting the use of non-food based biofuels. Electricity is traditionally much cheaper to be used as a fuel compared to gasoline. An electric vehicle driver will save about $13,000 in fuel costs over the lifetime of that vehicle, which is significant savings. Airplanes are one of the tougher ones, but there are technologies that can get us there too. You turn that algae into a biofuel and the whole process sucks up more carbon than it uses. So a carbon negative biofuel can be used to power planes until we have technologies that can fly planes with electricity or potentially other things in the future. Our food system will also be reinvented. Our reliance on big agriculture with pesticides, fertilizers, and herbicides that come with it results in unnecessary greenhouse gas emissions from enormous factory farms. Between 44 and 57 percent of current CO2 emissions per year can be directly traced to industrial conventional agricultural practices. As we have seven plus billion people on the planet, as we're dealing with climate extremes, as drought becomes the new normal, what farming system is more resilient? Regenerative organic agriculture is more productive. The organic fields produce 30 to 35 percent more corn than the conventional fields. Plants that are being farmed organically are more able to respond to the climate extremes that are the new normal. So when people say that we need conventional agriculture to feed the world, look at all the published data showing that we need organic agriculture. The paradigm shift is possible because of the technology shift, because wind and solar are inherently decentralized resources. And so we have this opportunity made possible by the technology. The issue really is one of control over that energy system and one about market share for the utilities. And frankly, they're reluctant to give up. It was essentially been a hundred year monopoly over both control of the system and control of the economic resources. Unless we have the rules uh, set up in such a way to allow for broad participation, broad ownership, we may not see that paradigm shift in the control of the energy system. We need to be making the choice to promote the energy technologies that are going to build a more prosperous future. I think we all know that that's clean energy now. If we can get people literally invested in the clean energy future and participating actively to create it, then we've got a lot better chance to avoid the scary climate problems that we face and to all be a part of this better future. It doesn't get a whole lot bigger than this. It is now clear that we can power civilization with sustainable sources of energy. This goal is not only achievable, it is also good economic policy. In a few decades, renewable energy can supply 100% of our world's energy needs using existing technologies, and it would create millions of jobs. Given the global threat of accelerated climate change, it is imperative we transition now. To learn more, go to greenworldrising.org.